I was at Walmart yesterday, and I found some peaches. Listen how they were described. Juicy, juicy white flesh. No blemishes. So juicy. Fat, nice white flesh. I like the juiciness. It's so delicious. So anyway, if you are not completely freaked out right now, that was my golem impersonation. I'm still working on it. I really am. Uh, but I, I, I saw these, uh, these peaches there, and I was just like, wow, this is just classic. I have to take advantage of this. Can you see me very well? I don't know if it's kind of in the sun or anything like that, but uh, quite frankly, I don't care because I'm driving right now and I want to be careful. But anyway, I would like to tell you about the Lord of the Rings. This is one of my favorite trilogies of all time, and uh, The Hobbit being my favorite in the series, so to speak. I, I know The Hobbit technically is not in the trilogy of The Lord of the Rings, but it's a part of the, stay, the same uh, saga, so to speak. Uh, why I like The Hobbit specifically is that it's not as dark as The Lord of the Rings, the, the trilogy. And plus, I grew up with my dad reading it to me, or rather us me or us being my sisters and I and every night before we went to bed my dad would crack open this old leather green binder and in it was the Hobbit and uh, and he would go through it and read maybe just just a little bit he, he always said his eyes would get very tired or, or rather his eyelids were heavy uh, it's probably because he worked all day long and then we were like, Dad, Dad, read us a story, read us a story. Um, but it was just so meaningful having that. And I carry that on to, you know, Lucy raising her and reading her a book every single evening, or at least a part of a book. And uh, it's just so nice to have your kids sitting there on your lap and, and you have the book in front of them and they're just relaxed and just listening to their dad's voice tell them about this, this magnificent, adventure-filled tale. Uh, yeah, it's qu quite meaningful, quite nice. During Christmas time, my dad would always read uh, J.R.R. Uh, Tolkien. I'm sorry, uh, Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens? Is that who wrote Christmas Carol? Oh man, I am losing it. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, that wasn't Mark Twain. Mark Twain was, was Huckleberry Finn, Tom Sawyer, that stuff. But no, every Christmas we would read about Scrooge and how, you know, and, and Fezziwig and all of these magnificent characters every single Christmas. Uh, so I would encourage you as well to read to kids. Uh, even if you don't have any kids, try to read aloud because that is a skill that you will take with you for the rest of your life to have the ability to read aloud and on the fly is it is one of those skills that few people have um, have you ever heard someone try to read out loud and they're not very good at it it it's just like I want to say read the book as if you were talking, just be natural, but they, they read it like this. And then the ghost of Christmas past came and said to Ebenezer Scrooge, and it's so awkward, it's like, come on, loosen up, person. Oh boy, oh boy. Uh, so my, my whole point of that is not to rail on other people about their inability to read aloud, but to encourage you to force yourself to read aloud and the best way to do that is to read to little kids because they don't care if you make mistakes and you can have fun with voices and, uh, and consequently I took that skill the ability to read aloud I do consider it a skill not something that I would put on my resume 
but it was definitely influential in me getting into the theater program at Whitworth University and uh, uh, and, and thriving on that. It was, it, it, it's a great skill to have. Oh, 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 I'm pulling up to the babysitter right now. <laughs> I see Lucy. Oh, she's crying. I think she was running and fell. Poor little thing. But she's in her pigtails, I see. Little blonde pigtails. So cute, so adorable. I'm gonna go read her a book now.